Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton, and I'm going to help you get that C in your GCSE. This lesson, fossils. This topic was requested by Henry William Smith and AJ Adkins. Thanks guys. If you've got a topic which you'd like me to cover, then just leave a comment below. So how does a fossil form? Well first, you need water. Fossils always form in sedimentary rock. The living organism needs to fall over in some water and have layers of sediment deposited on top of it, like this. That doesn't happen anywhere other than in water. So fossils form in lakes and rivers and seas and oceans, but you don't get fossils forming on the top of a mountain where there's no sediment being deposited. So that is crucial. And fossils are always found in sedimentary rocks. Things like sandstone and limestone are really good examples of rocks which you can find fossils in very often. And think about what those rocks are made from. Sandstone is made from sand, which is what you'd get at the bottom of a sea or at the bottom of, potentially at the bottom of a river. Limestone is made from the remains of seashells. So it's sea creatures which have died and fallen to the bottom of the sea and steadily they've been fossilized and their shells are still there. In fact, in some limestone areas, you can still see the fragments of the shells in the limestone. In some cases, when our organism falls over and gets covered by the sediment, it's going to be decayed. But just once in a while, it gets preserved. There isn't enough oxygen getting to it for decay to really start kicking in and start breaking it down. And it gets covered over and trapped underneath all that sediment and not disturbed. And that's when we start to get the conditions for a fossil to start being produced. So the remains of the organism get packed under layers and layers of sediment. And over time, those layers of sediment get squashed down around the remains of the organism and get harder and harder and turn to rock. Now, there's a couple of possibilities which can take place at this point. The first one is that those remains which are trapped in there will eventually decay. It may take a very long time, but eventually they break down, they decay, and they're steadily removed. And so you're left with an empty void inside the rock, an empty space. This is a mould. And eventually groundwater will seep into that mould and it will introduce small particles of rock a little bit at a time. And they refill that mould and we get a cast. This is known as the cast and mould method of producing fossils. So none of the original organism is still there. It went, but it left that space in the rock and that's then filled with more rock in the shape of the original organism. The other possibility is that the remains of that organism don't actually break down and remain trapped within the rock. And then bit by bit, over hundreds or even thousands of years, groundwater introduces a particle at a time of rock into that space and it removes particles of that original organism and replaces them with rock. Now obviously this takes a very, very long time, but you tend to get very fine, very detailed fossils as a result of this process as the original organic matter is totally replaced by rock. Whichever possible method of fossilization takes place, these remains stay underground for now. It's not until geological activity, such as tectonic plates colliding, starts to cause the land to move that they can be pushed towards the surface and then they're accessible to scientists. I hope that video really helps you. If you want to check how well you understood, then try the snap quiz. The link is right here and it'll also be in the description along with all the other links for this video. If you want to check out my other videos, then click right here. If you want to download the free app I've made to help you with your revision, then you can click right here. If you want to subscribe to my channel, then you can click right here. Don't forget to leave likes, and if you go to the comments, you can give me feedback and let me know which topics you'd like me to cover next. Good luck in your GCSEs everyone, and thanks very much for watching.